In this lecture, let us discuss about conditional random fields, which are a type of probabilistic model used for structured prediction, where the goal is to predict a sequence or structured output like a sequence of labels rather than a single label. So these conditional random fields they are mainly used to model probability of sequence of labels provided sequence of input data. So they are especially useful in uh, tasks where the context or neighboring data points matter. So unlike the generative models like HMMs, which model the joint probability, these conditional random fields model conditional probability, which allows them to incorporate wide variety of de dependent features of the input and also avoid modeling the distribution of inputs. Say, suppose uh, you're trying to label each word in a sentence with its POS tag and assume that the input is the cat sat on the mat. So for that, for the word the, you will assign determinant. For cat, noun, for sat, verb, on is a proposition, the is a determiner, mat is a noun. So like that for every word, uh, we'll assign different label, right? So here the label, it might depend on the word itself and also the labels of its neighboring words. So this uh, conditional random field allow you to consider all these dependence, dependencies. So it will try to incorporate variety of dependent features. Then why we need to use this CRFs means because they consider the entire input sequence when predicting the each label and la like uh, hidden Markov models, CRFs do not assume independence between the observed inputs these conditional random fields avoid the label bias problem, which is a problem in maximum entropy Markov models. Step one is to find the goal. So this is an input sequence, which is a sequence of observations. For example, in natural language processing, this could be sequence of words in a sentence. Then we have label sequence represented with Y. So these, these are nothing but the corresponding sequence of labels or tags for each input item, say in parts of speech tagging, this why is, uh, it is nothing but PO is tagged for words. And our goal is to predict the most likely sequence of labels represented with Y hat given the input sequence X. And you can compute it mathematically by using this formula, which means we want to find the label sequence Y that maximizes the conditional probability given input value x. So this is actually the uh, core objective in various models like hidden Markov model or conditional random fields, recurrent neural networks for sequence labeling or even transformer models like BERT with a classification head on top. So almost in all these cases, this is the main goal. Step two is to define the conditional probability. And this is a notation which defines the conditional probability of the label sequence Y given X, that is input. And you can see various terms here. So this FK of YT minus one, YT comma X comma T, this is a feature function that captures some property of the transition from yt minus 1 to yt. So that is a previous tag to the current tag at position t given the input sequence x. So best example is uh, say is the current word capitalized? Is the previous tag a noun? So you can take uh, all these things in order to predict that particular tag. So there's a feature function k at time t. Then lambda it's a wait for the feature which is learned during training. Then this EXP. So we exponentiate the weighted sum of feature functions to convert it into a positive score. Higher feature scores represent higher probabilities. Then we are using the Z of X, which is a partition function with sums over all possible label sequences Y dash. 
and also ensures the total probability over all possible sequences equals to 1. Step 3 is feature functions. We have functions represented with fk whose value can be either a binary value which means 0 or 1 or it can be a real value which doesn't re which returns any real number. So each of the functions capture some useful patterns in the data and they start firing. Say if the output value is 1. So here uh, say if a particular condition is true then the output will be 1 and this feature starts firing. They, they fire. Say if uh, the condition is not true then in that case output value becomes 0. So you can see these two examples. So this function it actually checks the label transition from one word to another. So it will consider the previous word as well as the current word. So that is the condition we applied for this first feature. And say suppose if the previous word label is determiner and the current word uh, label is noun. So we have something like this, the dog. Now we are trying to find out tag for this dog. So along with the current word, current tag, we are taking previous tag also. So if both the conditions are satisfied, then only we are giving instruction that this feature should fire and value should become 1. Okay. So when it uh, finds determiner followed by noun pattern, so whenever this pattern is observed, then in that case, this feature fires and value 1 will be assigned to that. Whereas in the second case, this function, it looks at the word itself. So it is not depending on the previous word. It is just considering only that particular word and its label. Say if the current label is verb and the actual word ends in ing, for example, we have a word like this, playing. So it is not bothered about any other words in the context. It is just looking. It is just, it, it just looks at the word playing itself. As well as the tag assigned to that. The tag uh, which we are assuming. Say if the tag assigned to that is verb. And if it ends in ing, then it starts firing. So that is the instruction. Okay. So here this feature F2 fires when it looks like a verb. Okay. When the word is labeled with verb and if that word ends in ing. So these feature functions, they are like detectors for useful patterns. So some look at uh, label transitions like going from determiner to noun. Whereas some look at word characteristics like suffixes or prefixes. So this is a suffix. So in that way, every feature follows its own pattern. Then coming to the training part. So we want to find the best weights represented with lambda for our features. So that the model predicts correct label y for input value x. So for that we are using uh, or we maximize the log likelihood for the correct sequences. So this is the log likelihood of the training set which means for all n training samples or training examples sum the log probability of the correct label sequence given input x bar n. So you can even see this like this. So this is the CRF definition of the conditional uh, probability. So this actually breaks down into two parts. One is score and second one is normalization. So this is score part and this is normalization part. So this one, the double sum is the score from all the feature functions that fired. And this log z of x is the log partition function used to make sure probability is always sum to 1. So now you can apply this to all the training examples. 
So for each training pair, we compute the total weighted score for the correct label sequence and subtract that from, subtract the log of the partition from function from this, from the total weighted score. So why we need to do this uh, step means, so maximizing this objective helps the model assign higher scores to the correct label sequences while still being a proper probability distribution. Then compute the gradient. So we want to maximize the log likelihood by adjusting the weights represented with lambda of each feature function fk. To do this, we compute the gradient of the log likelihood with respect to each weight. So weight is represented with lambda, right? So this is a gradient formula, which has two terms again. So you can see the first term, this part. This is the first term and this is second term. So this first term, it's a observed feature count, which counts how many times a feature FK actually appeared in the correct label sequence for input x power n. Okay, you need to check how many times this feature appeared in the sequence for that particular x. Whereas the second term, it is the expected number of times a model thinks that the feature will appear based on its current parameters. So this is the expected value. Next step six is inference. So decoding the best label sequence. So we want to find the most probable label sequence y hat given the input value x. So this is called inference in conditional random fields. We are trying to find figure out the best labels for a given input value using the CRF probability definition as the exponential function is monotonic, maximize the probability. Maximizing the probability is just like maximizing the log score without the exponential value. So we are using this equation. Uh, instead of working with the probabilities directly, we are just trying to maximize the feature score sum. So we can uh, implement this efficiently by using Viterbi algorithm similar to hidden Markov models. So this is the notation in a Viterbi algorithm. So our task is to find out best partial sequence scores. For that, you can use this, which means the maximum score of any sequence that ends in label Y at time T. And after that, recursive computation should be done. So that is the dynamic programming part where we compute the score recursively using this equation which means for each label y at time t, we look at every possible previous label y dash. And uh, we compute the total score if we come from y dash to y, say, if these two words are dependent. So just like how we considered the sentence the dog. So we are trying to predict the tag for this based on the previous tag or the previous label. Okay, so we compute the total score if we come from y dash to y. And we add the feature score which tells us how good the transition is. So how best the transition uh, works in order to give better tag to this word y. For that we are taking summation feature scores. We are adding all the feature scores. So we take the maximum over all the possible previous labels y dash. So this actually gives you the best path score ending in y at time t. Then backtracking. So while doing this, we store back pointers to remember which previous label y dash gave us the maximum score. And after processing all the time steps, we trace back from the final label with the highest score to reconstruct the best full label sequence. Step 8 is forward algorithm for partition function. 
So yeah, it's a normalizing constant used to ensure that the probabilities over all possible label sequences sum to one. And this is a mathematical form of that. So define alpha t of y. So it actually tells us that what is the total score of all the paths that end in label y at time t. And uh, the recursive step, it happens for each possible previous label y dash. So for that, we take the previous score alpha t minus 1, multiply it by the transition score from y to y, y dash to y and sum over all the sum over all y dash to get the total alpha t of y. So it's like the accumulating uh, weighted scores for from all the previous paths that lead to label y at time t. And the final step is, so after reaching the final step t, again sum over all possible ending labels to get the total partition function. So this is similar to forward algorithm in uh, hidden Markov model. Instead of picking the best path like in Viterbi, we are uh, summing over all possible paths, which is important during training to compute the probability of a label sequence. 